kind of give you a little background about our organization. We have five plants here in Morristown. We are the corporate headquarters for our organization. We're in um, Omaha, Nebraska, in Batavia, Illinois, in St. Louis, Missouri, Wisconsin. We had an office in South Carolina that um, we dissolved that partnership. Is that a nice way to say that? They're no longer part of the organization, but we did have in South Carolina. We just acquired a business last May in um, Georgia. Our primary focus is medical, dental, and cosmetic products, and we also do a lot of packaging for customers. We try to stay in, in that same field, so a lot of what we package goes along with medical, dental, cosmetic. So, um, across the entire organization, there is about a thousand employees. In Morristown, um, when I did my headcount report at the end of February, it was 708 here in Morristown alone. Um, it is a crazy whirlwind of a business, and it's wonderful. Um, we, if you've heard of Philips Sonicare, we make those brushes. We um, rewrap toothpaste for a customer to go into like Sam's Clubs and Costco's. We do facial brushes, scrub brushes, um, cytology brushes. I want to explain those. We make medical kits um, for critical care patients for a customer. So. You have someone that is um, unable to take care of their their oral needs. We have different kits, so two hours they pull out a kit and suction, use the suction swabs that we create and the moisture um, packets to, to take care of that. And then four hours they do the same thing. Um, it is a wide variety and um, it's really interesting to be able to watch that if you have time because I'm a nerd and I realize that and I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I took videos yesterday. We got a new piece of equipment in and um, got some video of our bristling. So you can, I have a video on my phone of a toothbrush being bristled. It's about 1.7 seconds for a toothbrush to be bristled and it is really cool. And on the opposite side of that, so that one's a staple set. So we have bristles get folded in half, stapled down into the toothbrush. Um, we have another piece of equipment. It makes the bristles, makes the shape of them, and then we mold the handle around it. So it is one of the neatest processes to watch. It's robots everywhere. The new machine is a whole bunch more robots, and there's moving parts all over the place, and it's really neat to see that work. So. I tried to capture that in a video and I probably didn't even do it justice, but um, it, it is really cool. Um, I would encourage you, if you ever want to come out and take a tour of any of our plants, let me know. I'll be more than happy to walk you around. Um, they make fun of me. Students? Oh yeah, okay. yeah, we do student <clears throat> groups. We've had, we have one, I don't know, I was unable to walk around last year. I was pregnant, so I did not do any tours last year. Um, I. I think we've, we've done one or two every school year um, with West High students that, that are in the CTE program. So anybody else, you're, again, you're more than welcome to. We do a presentation and then we take them out on the production floor and kind of show them a little bit about what we do. We primarily try to stay at our Plant 4 facility just because we have the biggest training room. We can fit more people in there. Um, but yeah, anytime you want to, you're more than welcome to. Um, if you want to, I'll give you a card after and just give me a call. Um, let's see, so advanced manufacturing. So what we have found with, with the workforce and, and the industry that we're adding and things like that, um, there, there is a, a labor shortage for us, um, which has driven us, which is good because it helps us progress. It's driven us to look at automation, more automation, more machines to help take some of the positions and free that labor up to do other jobs for us. Um, one thing we found, and in, in not speaking for all of HR and, and industry in Morristown, but um, a lot of what we hear and what we talk about in our HR groups is um, maintenance technicians or short maintenance technicians, so people that can actually fix the machines. Um, operators are even a struggle to, <coughs> to get and, and <coughs> keep them there because it's a wonderful environment in this county for people that want a job. Um, you you can go and do whatever you want to do and be whatever you want to be because we, we have a job for you. Um, specifically at Team Technologies, where we are, the corporate office for our organization, 
we've we've got the CEO and president, <laughs> we've got CFO, we've got all of all of that office. We do um, design work, so we make our we make products, different products. So we have to have design engineers to come up with those specifications um, and talk to the customer and see if that's something that they want. Um, we have in our R&D research and development group, we have machinists, we have electricians, and um, if you do have students that, that want to go down that route to become an electrician and PLC programmer, you can basically set your pay rate. You can basically say, this is what I want to make, and we're going to go, okay, because they're, it's, it's high skill and they're, they're not out there. So um, that I, I live in fear that one of our electricians is, is going to leave us because that is an impossible job to fill. So just a little side tidbit there for you. Um, so we have um, we have 3D printers. It's really neat. Design the project, goes to R&D, they print it out. We see if we can make the tooling to even make that, if we have the equipment to make that, what we would need to, to go do that. Uh, project managers that lead the project, salespeople that sell it to our customers, um, graphic designers that do the artwork for some of the um, the products, um, technicians of course that work on the equipment. We have operators that work that actually you know make the products and, and package them. Um, shipping, receiving, warehouse supervisors, <coughs> managers, production managers. We've we've got everything. Um, and you don't really realize, and I didn't realize, how large our organization was, even coming from another manufacturer, until you get in there and you see it and you're like, wow, we have a job for any skill level, any person, any entry level, to somebody that's been in the workforce for 40 years. Um, and we have different um, skill levels for our operators also. So you have someone that um, may not be able to lift 30 pounds, but that's fine. We have jobs where you can help load the things into the, the blister packaging, um, clear packaging where you can see like the toothpaste or the toothbrush, um, they load that in there. Uh, to jobs where they have to lift uh, metal plates are about 40 pounds, put a piece of rubber in it, put the other plate on top of it, stick it in the machine, and it makes the little cups that the dentist polishes your teeth with that like gritty toothpaste stuff that we we make those little <coughs> implements those little disposable profi ankles um so uh, it's just it's really neat to be able to see what we do so i really i hope you're as excited about it as as i was with our externs that came in last year um it was it was wonderful to be able to view it from their point of view. I got a little nervous when they had to do the presentation because I was like, oh my gosh, I hope they had a good time and it weren't horrible or you know something. But um, but it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, you get to see every different purchasing. I forgot about our other support functions. Don't tell them I, I forgot them, please. Um, but they got to go to every different department. They got to go. Bless their hearts. They got to go to a whole bunch of meetings. Um, they got to go see all five of our plants and, and really get integrated with what we do and, and that was really exciting and um, for me I'm huge on being involved with education because obviously you guys are, are building up the people that are going to come and, and work for us one day and so it's important for me to, to be partnered with you all and I, I hope I'm doing an okay job with that partnership. Um, let me see what else was I supposed to talk about. Um, soft skills. So, like you were saying, uh, the biggest challenges we have outside of the drug screens and being able to do the pre-employment is the importance of being at work on time and the days that you're supposed to be there. Um, we have a very generous attendance policy compared to some of the other places that I'm aware of and that I've worked in. in People just, I, I don't know if they don't understand the importance of, of being on time and how that drives <coughs> production for that day or how that drives their position or how that impacts everyone else down the line. Um, so in our orientations, we actually go through that with them. You know, here's our attendance policy, but let me explain to you why it's important for you to be here and how that impacts and how that could affect the rest of the day 
affect our customer, which in turn, if you know, if this happens enough time times and we can't get the product out on time because we don't have people here to, to run this line, then we lose that customer and guess what? There there goes about thirty jobs or you know, however many positions. So that's why it's important for you to be here and if you're not gonna be here, give us enough time to find someone else. Things happen. I get it, you have lives, things you're gonna get sick, you're gonna have to go to appointments. Give us enough time to find someone to, to fill in for you if you're not gonna be there. So um, one thing that <coughs> that we have found um, and that we are we're trying to work on as as an organization is Excel skills and you'll probably hear that a lot um, in the presentations last year I think every group up there mm -hmm. talked about oh my gosh I didn't realize you used Excel so much yeah mm -hmm. I'm in human resources 90% mm -hmm. of my job I feel like I, I live in Excel if I didn't have Excel I I don't know what I would do. I'd have to make a spreadsheet on a piece of paper and fill in the gaps. I don't. I just don't know. That's what I do. But our maintenance technicians use Excel because they track scrap turnover. How how long was the machine down? What did you have to do to fix it? They have to populate those cells, come up with the formulas. Supervisors use Excel to do um, the scrap um, efficiencies, different reports that they have to do to report out on to their to their manager and our director of operations. Um, you know, obviously our office staff uses Excel, but, but it's, it has, it has been a challenge to find someone that has those kinds of skills. And a lot of it can be learned, um, you know, there's videos out there and things like that, but the, the basic, we have people that can set up the spreadsheets, you know, most, most of the time you can find someone that can create that, that big spreadsheet for you, you just have to populate it. What we're finding is like formatting, entering into a spreadsheet, coming up with a simple sum formula, um, that sort of stuff, they're, they're just not able to do. And so that, it's a struggle. Um, even in my own department, we struggle with that. You know, we're, we're trying to teach and, and move forward, but um, Excel's still a challenge, so you'll hear that a lot. Um, of course, technology, we talked about automation and robots and, um, different ways we're having to automate things to free up labor and that has been uh, helpful for us. Um, we're expanding. We got, I, I, think, I think I said that, about the new, I know I said that, about the new machine because it's really cool. So uh, we got our new machine. We've got at least one more of those coming in. So that is even, and those jobs are, are pretty skilled. They have to attention to detail, hand-eye coordination. Technicians have to be PLC, they have program PLCs and um, work on equipment and robotics and things like that. So those are a little bit um, higher skills than our operators that load uh, toothbrushes and packages. So um, each one is incredibly valuable to us. So not, not saying one is any more important than the other because they're not, they're all important. And um, some, some of the things that we do, uh, we do community involvement, um, we, we try to do, get teams together uh, sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. I don't know why people didn't want to come out and run in the rain with us for the glow in the dark 5K. Um, that was that was a lot of fun. But we do we do things like that. Of course, we're involved with the internships. Um, we do some training for our maintenance technicians through TCAT, Walter State. We've done some Excel classes, so we're trying to um, help our employees learn that and give them some different skills where. If you're really wanting to learn it and it's not part of your position right now, what can we do to help you? Because in turn, that's going to help the organization, obviously. So um, that's important to us. Um, we've en enhanced our benefits packages for vacation and pay and everything um, just because that helps the employees, helps give them a better quality of life, but also helps us too for recruitment and things like that. So. Um, just I guess as a, a follow-up or a, whatever, I'm gonna step outside of HR and just from a from an individual standpoint, it is Four Sounds a great place to be for for jobs for anything that you wanted to do. It's in Hamblin County. I think we've got it here, and um, with with all of the things that we're adding in, it's just going to be even better in the future. So. Um, Kids are getting out of school, don't really know what they want to do. Oh, I'm going to go to work. That's fantastic. And you have so many organizations that will help them continue their education while they work and will work with them 
um, to to help them further their education and improve their their skill set because again it helps the organization. So um, that's my little pitch on that. Do y'all have any questions for me?